on today's Apple Daily. Native Apple Silicon support comes to Office and Firefox. Apple increases iPhone 12 orders by 30% for the next quarter and plans for an aggressive production of Apple Silicon Macs in 2021. Today's Apple Daily is sponsored by WinX DVD Ripper Platinum. Right now, WinX DVD is hosting a holiday giveaway where you'll get a license, link in the description. WinX DVD Ripper Platinum supports any DVD, new releases, old or damaged DVDs, even badly structured, region locked or 99 title discs. So whether you're digitizing your library to save space or trying to rescue that old family DVD, this is the solution for you. You can convert any DVD to MP4, FLV, AVI, MOV or MP3 or optimize for iPhone, iPad, Android, Windows or Mac. You can rip DVDs to MP4 to play back on Windows 10 or Macs without optical drives which let's be honest is almost all of them now. You can even edit the video in just a few clicks plus all of this in just 5 minutes using level 3 hardware acceleration up to 47 times faster. Download the free trial at the link in the description. For the latest Apple news, rumors and leaks every weekday at 12 UTC. Join us in the iCave. Thanks, Siri. And don't forget, if you want to get involved in any of the conversations going on on our social media platforms, you can go to iCaveDave.com forward slash Instagram forward slash YouTube forward slash Facebook forward slash Twitter or forward slash Discord. And you will find uh, yourself just in all of those platforms. It's magical. Native Apple Silicon support comes to Microsoft Office and Firefox. Apple Silicon's native support is getting better day by day, eliminating the performance hit that running Intel native apps via Rosetta 2 can bring. In the past couple of days alone, Microsoft has released their Apple Silicon native version of Microsoft Office, which I hear is still used by a handful of users worldwide, even if it is quite a niche product. In addition, open source browser Firefox has also brought Apple Silicon native code. So if you're a supporter of open source computing or just like the idea of more competition in the browser space, there's another option now. Especially with the ongoing confusion around whether Google Chrome's Keystone updater is causing problems with Mac performance, even if it's not showing up in your activity monitor, if you're seeing a super high Windows Server activity, that might be the culprit. Though the jury is still out on this one. In all honesty though, if you're using a Mac and you don't have a specific use case absolutely requiring you to use another Office or browser software, I highly recommend using Apple's own apps. Safari on Apple Silicon is blisteringly fast and sips very, very gently on that battery. And for me, Pages, Numbers and Keynote beat the Office suite absolutely hands down. The only asterisk here being if you do need to convert files to send in a Word document format, uh, there are often some wonky formatting issues that will take some work. But if you're doing everything natively on your Mac and creating PDFs or emailing it or printing it, Just go for it. Apple increases iPhone 12 orders by 30% for the next quarter. New reports show that Apple is looking to order 96 million iPhones for January to June 2021, up around 30% from last year's orders, effectively confirming the popularity that this year's iPhone refresh cycle was reported to have seen. My best guess is that this is very much to do with the new look design across the range, as well as the introduction of iPhone 12 mini expanding the range downwards. Also, reports have shown that the iPhone 12 Pro models have had better than expected demand in the iPhone 12 range, even though everyone said it would be a complete flop without 120Hz ProMotion displays. As I said before, I genuinely don't think the vast majority of the public in general have a clue what refresh rate means, nor should they. When it actually comes to the iPhones and they see it and they feel it for themselves, it will feel a bit nicer, but the biggest difference will be when they try to go back to an older device. I don't think it's a big improvement to how the devices feel, but stepping backwards is a big step down and I'm sure that we will see it in 2021. But for me, it's still not a feature that would on its own be a deal maker to tempt me to upgrade. Apple plans an aggressive production schedule of Apple Silicon Max in 2021. So you may or may not have noticed, but Apple has recently made a fairly significant change to their Max by kicking out Intel and plopping in their very own Apple Silicon into the lowest end Macs, the MacBook Air, the 13 inch MacBook Pro and the Mac Mini. And for the MacBook Pro that is only the very base model with the two Thunderbolt ports. But here's the thing, they're actually pretty quick and some people noticed that they were actually faster than pretty much all of the top spec models in the ranges that kept their Intel options. So following on from the news that Apple's M1 powered Mac mini has just made Apple jump from 15 to 27.1% of the entire desktop market in Japan in just a couple of weeks after it was launched, 
it seems that the guys out in Cupertino decided they should probably make some more of these Macs as well. Nikkei Asian Review reports that Apple will prepare an aggressive production schedule for its high-end computers, including MacBook Pro and iMac Pro for 2021. Now, only yesterday I said that I don't know if Apple needs an iMac Pro to continue when Apple Silicon comes to the iMac in general, especially as it hasn't seen an update since 2017 before the current Mac Pro was announced or released. And when I say I mentioned it yesterday, I mean in the comments, it was not part of the main video, so don't go back trying to find that part. That being said, the rumoured versions of Apple Silicon that we understand Apple is testing right now could make their way to the iMac and the iMac Pro Big Brother. On December the 7th, Bloomberg reported that Apple is working on Apple Silicon SoCs with 16 power cores. Those are the high performance Firestorm cores in addition to four Ice Storm cores, which are the high efficiency cores. These are intended for high-end MacBook and iMac models. There are also 8 and 12 Firestorm core models being explored for these devices, though it's not clear if these will simply be binned chips with a lower number of cores because some are not operable on the silicon and sold at a lower cost. While single core performance on the M1 is an industry leading 1730-ish on Geekbench 5, multi-core score certainly has some room to grow with more cores with the four Firestorm Core M1 being comparable to an Intel i9-10900K. Bloomberg also reports that a 32 performance core chip is being explored for 2022 for the Mac Pro itself, which is rumored to have a smaller yet familiar form factor based on the current model chassis, as well as graphics being explored to move from the current eight core version to 16 and 32 core graphics in 2021 and 64 to 128 cores in 2022. So AMD and Nvidia should both worry about what has just happened to Intel as Apple might be coming for them too. Just for context, based on the M1's graphics being roughly equivalent to a GTX 1050, doubling the cores would likely give something close to an AMD Pro Vega 20 or an Nvidia GeForce GTX Titan X. And doubling again to 32 cores brings us up to a Geekbench graphics score around 58,000 and the AMD Radeon RX Vega 64. The highest score ever on Geekbench is the AMD Radeon Pro Vega 2 Duo with 97,208 for context. So 58,000 in the 32 core is pretty impressive. But I have to ask the question, which Apple Silicon Mac are you waiting for? If you've picked one up already, let me know what you've got down in the comments. And if you haven't yet, which is it you're waiting for? I know there's a lot of you out there waiting for a 16 inch MacBook Pro, but if Apple was to bring out a 13 inch MacBook Pro with the extra ports and a faster SOC, would that be of interest to you? Or is it the screen size that you really need? Let me know down in the comments. And don't forget, if you want to join our notification squad, all you need to do, like the video, subscribe to the channel and ring that bell so that you don't miss a thing. Let me know in the comments that you've done that by using the hashtag notification squad. And I will give you a shout out at the end of our next video. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.